Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe here in Hungary. I hope everybody is having a great weekend so far, staying healthy, staying strong, and ready for this speaking class for the IELTS, talking about Band 9 communication and focusing on part three of the speaking interview. Hi, Carolina. Welcome to the class. Hi again, Ois. Let me check my settings here real quick for this. Yeah, okay, everybody can join the chat. I just wanted to make sure because we had members coming in first, so that's fine then. All right. Okay. So, uh, let's get into this class. Uh, just give me one second. I just have to make one adjustment here. Uh, one moment, one moment. Okay, just trying to change some settings here, students. Just give me one second. YouTube is not cooperating with my... Okay, so... All right, I'll be back here in two seconds. Okay. There we go. All right. Thanks for your patience. Now I see all of the other students in the class as well. Uh, hi, Catherine. Hi, Un. Hi, Leonette. And Pegasus. Welcome, everyone. All right. So let's get cracking. Um, this class is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic English help and IELTS help. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of our websites, we have lots and lots of materials for you. Um, for the general IELTS, visit us here at gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button to join. And uh, for the academic, it's aehelp.com. It's this blue background. Uh, and uh, when you join, um, I'm already logged into my student account here, so I just wanted to show you this real quick. In your My Student account, you have Student Partner Speaking, Task 1, Task 2 Writing, and Speaking Interview Practice that you can book, so make sure to use uh, these uh, in your account, in your My Student account. You have computer-based practice exams and lots and lots more. And again, that's aehelp.com, so you can click that big red button to join there. Okay, let me brighten up our world here a little bit. There we go, and then we'll get right into the lesson. This lesson is following the lesson that we just had for members for part two, so these speaking part three topics are going to be connected to part two. If you missed that, it's not a big deal. It will still make sense. Um, part three of the speaking is related to the discussion and the topic of part two. Okay, so keep that in mind. If anybody has questions about the IELTS or our product services, just send me an email at adrian at aehelp.com. Okay, all right. And the next live class will be on the 21st. Just want to let you know about that. Um, at the same time, that will be speaking part one. Live classes are uh, Wednesday to Saturday. Uh, Makbuba says, Sir, it's often said that speaking guesswork books come out by Makar IELTS are often considered to be the ones you're likely to come across in the real exam, uh, depending on which session you're taking. Um, Makbuba, it's not true. It's impossible to guess the topic and questions 
of the next exam. Uh, it can be anything. You have to prepare uh, based on strategy. And remember what I just showed you, Mahbuba, if you watched the last class, um, then there's no way to prepare for those part two follow-up questions. Uh, so in part two, uh, we just talked about a time in life when we felt a lot of pressure. So that was part two. And the reason I'm reviewing this with you right now is because this will be useful for your part three answers. So part two was a time you felt pressure in life. Uh, and we talked about uh, road test for driver's license. Now, just a quick review and members, you can probably help us out here a little bit. Those of you who were in the class, uh, when did you feel the pressure? So give me some specific points here. When did you feel pressure at that time? So we talked about a few different specific situations for this road test where you felt pressure. Uh, what were those? Do you remember? So let's, uh, let's talk about these because these will become very useful uh, for our part three questions. So when was it? Okay, very good. So Carolina says, while parallel parking. Yep. When else did we feel pressure? So always we felt the pressure during the road test. Absolutely. What were some of the other times when we felt the pressure? Uh, always says examiner looks. You mean examiner got in the car? Okay. To find out the meaning of parallel parking, if you missed it, check the last class. Beckjohn says when the test started. Okay, we didn't have lane change. Uh, the night before, remember that? The night before. Okay, and we talked about one. We didn't really include it, but we talked about it. Okay, Beck John says lack of sleep. Also to make dad proud. Um, and we had another one. Remember the reason why? Romaine, I don't think <laughs> possibly the U-turn, but we didn't talk about that. Remember the reason for the road exam? Yeah, that's right, Beck John. And Sammy got it too. Yeah, the pizza, the job application uh, needed for job. Okay. So it's important to keep these in mind, all right? So we talked about a time we felt pressure in life for part two. That was just the last class that we had 30 minutes ago or ended 30 minutes ago. Um, and it was a road test to get a driver's license. We felt a lot of pressure while parallel parking. We felt nervous when the examiner got in the car. Uh, we felt nervous when the test started. We felt nervous the night before the test when we knew it was coming. Um, we felt nervous because we really wanted to make our dad proud that took us to the exam. And then we also felt nervous because we needed this driver's license to get a job so we could make money for university and, um, and for the IELTS exam, right? So make sure you're speaking, everyone. So speak and repeat when you hear me say some sentences, express myself, okay? Um, so keep these in mind, these will be useful, okay? So keep in mind the information that you said in part two, as this will be very useful for your answers in part three, okay? All right, so for part three, it's not a chit chat. You need to give nice, fluent, complete answers that are on topic. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, let's get right into it. Let's answer a few questions and then we'll talk strategy and how to do the best, okay? 
All right. Uh, Vlad, yeah, you do need to wear masks um, during the IELTS exam. So Vlad's just in We just released a speaking video about wearing a mask and what to do uh, during the speaking interview. And Vlad's asking a qu quick question. Do we really need to wear masks? Yes. I think most parts of the world, maybe all parts of the world, you have to wear masks. And Vlad, the reason for that is because remember, IELTS is international. There are lots of different people taking the IELTS exam. So there's a high uh, risk of contagion in the IELTS exam, unfortunately. That's why IELTS is having such a tough time because uh, people go to IELTS test centers from all over the place, not just other cities, but even other countries. Okay, so is everybody clear why you have to wear a mask uh, during your IELTS exam? You have people coming from all over your country and maybe even other countries to sit the IELTS exam. So the risk of infection is much higher than in other situations. So you have to wear it in all parts, okay? It's, it, IELTS is like an international gathering of people, okay? So, all right. Okay, uh, so let's get back to this. So here we go. What are some typical situations? So part three question following part two. What are some typical situations when individuals feel a lot of pressure? All right. Oni Seem says there are many situations when individuals confront with unbearable stress. Most of the time, the pressure occurs during driving exams or bachelorette, bachelorette, is that, as I mentioned in part two? I'm not sure what that word is there, Onisim. Um, okay, think of some other situations, Onisim. Visualize, okay? Uh, please don't spam, come, okay? All right. Un says there are several main situations where people feel tense, like uh, before important examinations, like the IELTS test or a parking test, as I just talked about. Besides that, some events like wedding day or, okay, Un, you're on the right track. I wonder what else you're coming up with. Uh, Sammy says, while uh, taking people generally feel pressure, whether they will pass a test or not, and tension, sleeplessness. Okay, Sammy, uh, give me some more situations. It's a plural. Watch your plurals. What are typical? What are typical situations? Typical means common situations. These days, it's very common to see, see people feel pressure during exams uh, for proving their proficiency in English like I'm doing now or getting a driver's license uh, because in this competitive world... Okay, Carolina, you're on the right track. Okay, Carolina says people need to stand up to achieve their goals, as I had just mentioned when I took my driving test. Okay. All right. Senny says, I think people feel nervous, such as during final examinations, IELTS job interviews, and when they are in a rush. Why are they in a rush, Senny? That doesn't make sense. So I think examinations, job interviews, that's good. All right. Yeah, Nawal. Very good. Nawal says, uh, before delivering a speech in front of public. Yeah, so while public speaking, right? Public speaking is one of the highest stress situations for a lot of people, okay? So keep your mind open, students. Think about when you have felt stress, when you need to perform in front of an audience. You need to give a speech. Uh, you're doing some singing, maybe a talent show. Okay, those are common situations. So some common... circumstances when people feel tense and anxious include important exams like 
the driver's test I just spoke of or this IELTS exam as well as during public speaking or performing in front of an audience not to mention when a person is in love and courting their partner or perhaps when they are about to do a risky activity like jumping from a five meter springboard into a pool with their friends watching. All right. So visualize, students. Uh, think about all of the situations where you felt a lot of pressure in your life. Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. So what are some typical situations when individuals feel a lot of pressure? Some circumstances when people feel tense and anxious include important exams like the driver's test I just spoke of or this IELTS exam, as well as during public speaking or performing in front of an audience, not to mention when a person is in love and courting their partner, or perhaps when they are about to do a risky activity like jumping from a five meter springboard into a pool with their friends watching. What is the collocation when your friends are the cause of the pressure that you feel? There's a very commonly used and among teenagers is discouraged. Um, what's that collocation that is used in English to clearly express the pressure that we feel from friends to do some activity, something dangerous or uh, risky, um, for example, smoking or drinking. Jayesh, very good. You're the first one to answer that. Boom. Good job, Rajveer, in second place in TS Tarumbir. Yeah, it's called peer pressure. Okay. Learn this collocation if you don't know it. Peer pressure is pressure felt from the felt from friends and peers, right? So your cohorts. Okay, cohorts means your age group. Okay, it's called peer pressure. Remember this collocation, it's very useful. Okay, most of us experience peer pressure at certain points in our lives. All right. Good. Uh, here we go. Follow up question. Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Think answer, explanation, example, see it in your mind's eye, be fluent. Okay. What are good ways to cope with this kind of stress? So this is a follow up to this question. Okay. So the stress that we feel when we're taking an exam or publicly speaking, or when we're dating and we want to impress our partner, uh, or when we're jumping off of a springboard into water and we're scared of heights, maybe a little bit of acrophobia, how can we cope? So what are good ways to cope with this kind of stress? Sammy says some of the stress releasing methods are listening to soothing music, calling family members, taking a deep breath. Also having a cup of cold water helps to release pressure. Sammy, those are great. Which one works best for you? Uh, Carolina says the best way to cope with stress is to do some exercises for an hour a day, take some fresh air, breathe some fresh air, do some yoga and have a good night's sleep before an important exam. Good. Beck John says one of many ways to prevent feeling stressed 
in advance is people need to think positively, like passing their test and uh, being successful. And another way is to take a deep breath and stay calm. Yeah, so positive thinking or taking some form of medicine that helps people relax. That should only be a very last resort, everyone. Taking medicines is an artificial way. It's not a medicine, it's a drug in that case, to be more specific. And it's a very artificial way uh, to cope with stress. And in the long run, it's very damaging. So I highly recommend that you do not turn to drugs to manage stress, okay? Use natural methods first and foremost. Uh, Pandya says, good ways to cope with this kind of pressure is to stay focused and keep calm. Like, for example, when I need to speak or address uh, the public on stage, um, okay, Pandya, watch your repetition, okay? You're getting into circular repetition there and your mark will be affected negatively by that, so careful, okay? All right, uh, Amin says, I think this type of stress can be managed by drinking water, uh, breathing some fresh air, and uh, thinking positively about the situation. Yeah, students, not taking fresh air. That's a little bit awkward, okay? Um, it's breathing fresh air. Be always very specific with your verb choice, all right? There are some differences in British and American English, like taking tea, British English, drinking tea, American English but you want to be specific. Drinking tea is definitely clear in British as well. Taking tea is not clear in American English because taking tea is kind of a British slang, okay? Because you actually drink tea. You don't take tea. Okay, um, Onisim says there are many uh, good advice that can significantly uh, help to effectively cope with stressful situations uh, such as taking a deep breath and drinking a glass of cool water will relieve most anxiety. Okay. Shub Sharat says common ways to relieve pressure is to do medit uh, meditation. If I'm in uh, any kind of stress, whether it's academic or social, uh, I do some meditation and it helps me to calm down. Shub Sharad, I love that answer, okay? Meditation, first of all, is a really good uh, remedy for feeling pressure or stress. And uh, I really like how you uh, explain the concept of stress as academic stress or social stress. That's really nice, okay? Hikmatola says, one of the greatest ways to cope with this sort of stress is to take a deep breath of fresh air as well as listen to some relaxing music and maybe take a stroll in the park. Yeah, so venting, it's called venting when you do that, venting. Zaid says, some solutions uh, suggested to avoid uh, feeling panicky in these cases is to uh, quickly think of good situations that have happened or um, making a mental change by taking a deep breath. Zaid, you have some good ideas. I made some corrections there uh, to make it a bit more accurate English. Malika says, we can handle stress perfectly. It's challenging, uh, but possible. For instance, when we have uh, a feeling of pressure and stress to give a lecture, uh, we can practice speaking in front of a mirror to feel confident and prepared. Uh, Malika, very good. I gave you again some more corrections there. All right. Rajveer says, I think some smart methods to overcome stress uh, are taking deep breaths, drinking some water, and uh, thinking about being in the company of a loved one to calm down, as I did in my driver's test, uh, visualizing my father. Yeah, and I see you wrote that. Uh, Rajveer, very good. Okay. Very nice students, lots of great answers there. Okay, so um, there are several effective 
methods to manage stress in these kinds of situations, both mental and uh, physical exercises, such as doing an hour of meditation, whereby focusing on deep breathing and positive visualization. Also, swimming for half an hour can be very powerful to calm the nerves. In fact, whenever I have a presentation in front of a large audience, I always go to the pool and swim a few laps a couple of hours beforehand. Okay. So, uh, yeah, great suggestion, students. Here's my answer. Uh, repeat after me. Again, take away some of the vocabulary and grammar that I'm using. Take notice of the conjunctions, correlative, both and, not only, but also. Use these as I commonly advise you to do so. They'll get you higher band scores. Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. What are good ways to cope with this kind of stress? There are several effective methods to manage stress in these kinds of situations, both mental and physical exercises, such as doing an hour of meditation, whereby focusing on deep breathing and positive visualization. Also, swimming for half an hour can be very powerful to calm the nerves. In fact, whenever I have a presentation in front of a large audience, I always go to the pool and swim a few laps a couple of hours beforehand. Okay, all right. MD Omar says, sir, how can I improve my accent? Uh, firstly, Omar, don't worry too much about your accent. As long as I can understand the words you're saying, it's fine. Okay, there are many different English accents around the world. Pronunciation only matters if I don't understand what you're saying, okay? To improve your pronunciation, Omar, uh, you can practice your English phonetics and do a lot of repetition work, okay? All right, yeah, Kowal, I do these uh, live classes every chance I get, so every week from Wednesday to Saturday, okay? Um, okay, uh, Shub Sharat says, can I explain the last line? And Harpreet says, can you explain whereby? Sure, I can do both, okay? So let's go back to whereby. Okay, so here I'm saying I can do mental and physical exercises. Mental exercise is my hour of meditation. My hour of meditation is defined by focusing on deep breathing. So when you use the word whereby, um, think about it like defining this further by. Okay, so think about it as a, if I said defining this further by. Okay, so going into more detail is whereby, all right? Um, during meditation, I'm focusing on deep breath. So you see how I use whereby? Anytime I want to give a deeper definition by giving this information. Um, thereby you can use it back, John, it's almost the same, uh, but it's not quite okay. Uh, whereby is a deeper definition thereby back, John is as a result or, um, following that. Okay. So it's a little bit different in meaning. It's not exactly the same. Be careful. All right. I don't want to spend too much time explaining the, yeah. So thereby back, John is more cause and effect. 
uh, whereby is kind of cause and effect, but it's also more a sense of, uh, instead of cause and effect for whereby, think about as a deeper definition, okay? Investigate these if you're not familiar with them. They're very useful, whereby and thereby, okay? Okay, the last sentence, <laughs> Carolina, thank you. Okay, the last sentence here, so... Um, in fact, whenever I have a presentation in front of a large audience, so here I'm giving a real life example that's smooth flowing to my explanation. So basically I'm saying in any, uh, at any time when I'm giving a speech for many people, I go to the swimming pool and swim laps. Swimming laps in the swimming pool means that you swim back and forth. So it's a 50 meter swimming pool. You swim 50 meters there, 50 meters back, 50 meters there, 50 meters back. That's swimming laps, okay? Laps. So a lap means that you go once around, okay? Because in swimming, you go around, um, like when you're running a lap. So if you run, you can run a lap around a track and field track, okay, that's called a lap, or the car, uh, race cars drive laps around the race track, okay, it's called a lap. Uh, it's kind of confusing because the other meaning of lap, of course, is like laptop, um, which is uh, your two thighs together, the top of your two thighs, that's your lap, okay. All right, okay, um, good, good question, students. Yeah, ask me, stop me, slow me down, make sure that it's all clear. Okay, I don't want to just blast through these answers, okay? Yeah, Sammy, uh, time lapse is related to a lap as well. Yes, absolutely, okay? Uh, man meet, uh, hand gestures are good in the IELTS speaking, especially now that you're wearing a face mask, okay? Yeah, Amanjot, thanks. So Amanjot says, go to the website, register, and you're going to get a lot of answers there for sure. Yeah, Amanjot, very true. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to this next question. Here we go. Uh, if people run away from difficult situations in life, what may be the consequences? So this is where you might want to use a phrase to buy a little bit of time. Okay. All right, so you might want to start here with a leading expression. So Bagjian says, this is quite an interesting question. The ramification of this may be more serious uh, than the previous one in the long run. What I mean is that people may end up spending both time and energy. If I had not passed the driving test, I would have wasted a lot of time and been rejected from my job application. Very good, Baekjeon. So you realize that this is the type of question where you want to buy some time and think. Yeah. An says, escaping from difficult situations can have adverse impacts on people's lives in the long run, like joblessness, being uneducated, as they couldn't jump out of their comfort zone and learn to cope with stress. Yeah. Arguably, one of the greatest lessons in our lifetime is stress management. Indeed. Yeah. Very nice answers. Okay. Uh, Moria, running away from problems can give people a temporary sense of comfort, um, but in the long run, it causes more problems like uh, losing a sense of identity and a vision of what the future holds. Very good. Carolina says, when individuals avoid tough situations, it results in guaranteed failure. It's very difficult to go out of a comfort zone for some people um, who are uh, content with their lives and give up on future ambitions. Christian Cruz says there are lots of consequences when people avoid stressful situations. One is that they lose the opportunity of learning from that specific situation and also they will become content, okay? 
All right. Uh, DST Amrik is asking, why are these streams always lagging? Uh, very good uh, question, DST. It's because I'm using an ultra low latency stream, unlike almost every other stream that you see in there. So we're almost in real time. We're almost in perfect real time. But the only way YouTube can do that is with slight jitter and with, of course, uh, lower uh, resolution because we're almost real time. Uh, most people do their streams in low latency, not ultra low latency. And that's okay, but the problem with low latency DST is that um, uh, it, there's about a 10 second delay between what you write and between my speech. And in this kind of class, that's actually very awkward. Just imagine we'd be 10 seconds apart or more, 15 even, okay? So that's why you see this chop. I'm sure in the future as we get more fiber optics and connections and so on, the real time streaming will become much more fluent, but I'm one of the first people to do this. So, hey, why not? Give it a shot, right? Um, it's more content anyway. If I were the next Avengers movie, this would not be the right way to do it. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, Nirav says, the fear of failure is the reason that drives people away from difficult situations and it results in them giving up on their dreams because um, achieving dreams often requires people to move out of their comfort zones and feel stress or pressure. Uh, Nirav, you have a really good start. I would change it a little bit at the end so that you stay on the topic of the question, right? You have to answer the consequences, okay? So um, when people avoid uh, challenging this in their lives, there are many adverse ramifications. such as a lack of development socially, socially, economically, and educationally. This is because a lot of the great achievements in life demand that people move out of their comfort zones and take risks, such as my decision to move to Canada. All right. So here we go, uh, students. This is my answer. Again, answer, explanation, example. Uh, here I really focused on giving you a lot of paraphrasing. So if people run away, okay, when people avoid. So if people run away is the same as when people avoid, okay? Notice how you have run away here. This is a phrasal verb. The accurate verb is avoid, okay? So whenever you hear a phrasal verb, a quick way to paraphrase is to give the specific verb like avoid. Whenever you hear a specific word in the question like avoid, you can use a phrasal verb like run away. Difficult situations is the same as challenging uh, circumstances. Okay, so I'm really focusing on my paraphrasing to show lexical resource, all right? So uh, here we go. Just repeat after me when you have, if you have questions, I'll explain. So when people avoid challenging circumstances in their lives, there are many adverse ramifications such as a lack of development socially, economically, and educationally. This is because a lot of the great achievements in life demand that people move out of their comfort zones 
and take risks, such as my decision to move to Canada. Okay, and this is, of course, empathizing with a lot of people who are planning to immigrate to Canada. All right, so answer, explanation, and example with good connection. All right. Any questions? Uh, Bobo Murad says, what does ramifications? Uh, ramifications is a really nice uh, way to paraphrase consequences. Um, it Ramifications includes negative, uh, although I strengthened it with the worst ad word adverse. Okay, so adverse means negative ramifications. Okay. Yeah, Raghav says another way that we could say ramifications is repercussions. Very good, Raghav. Repercussions would be another way to paraphrase consequences using some nice um, lexical resource there. Okay. Okay. Uh, here we go. How can people prepare themselves for the challenging parts of life? Okay. So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. How can people prepare themselves for the challenging parts of life? Okay. Give me some nice answers. This is a great question. It's a valuable question for everybody to think about. And you can even say that. That's a valuable question and one that most people should think about. Moria says, individuals must be aware that challenges are part of our lives and we can ask ourselves questions like, what are the obstacles that I might face in the future and where and how can I learn from them? Sammy says, be bold and strong in life. I usually get help from my wife to overcome some challenges. Yeah, so find the support of others, right? Don't just depend on yourselves. We as humans are much stronger in groups than alone. That's very, very true. Just Preet says it depends upon the complexity of challenges and tasks which people are preparing for. As I'm preparing for my IELTS exam, so it requires practice to tackle all the modules. Just Preet, it's a very vague answer. Try to stay away, students, from the it depends answer, okay? If you want a really important tip to increase your band scores, avoid the it depends answer, okay? Uh, these are usually too general and confusing. And nobody really likes them, okay? Nobody really likes to hear the answer. It depends. Um, would you like to have a million dollars? Well, it depends. Where did the money come from? How did it? No, come on. Yeah, okay, give me the million bucks, right? So nobody likes, people generally don't like the it depends answer. It, it leads to kind of boring, unnecessary communication. So stay away from it. Stay away from it, okay? All right. Um, just a tip, just a tip. Okay. Senny says, it is better to be prepared uh, while people are young, learning all of the positive knowledge around them. So when a rainy day comes, they are ready and prepared. Uh, Senny, watch those corrections. Okay, I made a few very important corrections there. All right, okay. Un says, people can practice every day to stay calm, try to deal with difficult circumstances by thinking logically. By doing this, they will know how to overcome difficulties when these cross their paths, yeah, when they encounter them. Okay. Lots of answers, fantastic. Okay, Oa says, in order uh, to build confidence in ourselves. It's important to face challenges in our lives. First, we set goals and then allocate time to implement these goals and ch choose the perfect time to start these 
with strong will as on my road test I thought of past experiences and practice. Okay, oh, it's not bad. I had to do quite a bit of correction to make that clear English. So careful with your grammar, OS, and your word choice. Carolina says individuals can have short and long-term goals throughout their lives. So every step they take helps them to prepare for the challenging situations in the future. Before my driver's test, I created a habit of practicing for an hour each day, which gave me a satisfactory result. Very nice, Carolina. A couple of slight corrections. Students, notice how I'm staying away from using will, okay? Be very uh, conscientious of how you use the word will in your speaking and writing. It's a very powerful word, and it's often overused, okay? All right. So, one of the best ways to be prepared for tasking situations in life is through practice and self-mastery. This is achieved both mentally and physically through methods I had mentioned before, such as meditation and exercise. Okay. All right, um, so here's my answer. Uh, repeat after me. How can people prepare themselves for challenging parts of life? One of the best ways to be prepared for tasking situations in life is through practice and self-mastery. Tasking is another synonym for challenging, okay? This is to achieve both, this is uh, achieved both mentally and physically through methods I mentioned before, such as meditation and daily exercise. And now here, the examiner might say, can you elaborate? Um, sure. A healthy body is a healthy mind, as the saying goes. So when people go on a half hour jog, each day, they not only release stress, but also build mental fortitude to handle the challenges of the day, whether it's a driving test or a job interview. Okay. So again, uh, repeat after me here, students. Can you elaborate? Always elaborate when the examiner asks you this. So when people go on a half hour uh, jog each day, they not only release stress, but also build mental fortitude to handle the challenges of the day, whether it's a driving test or a job interview. Okay, and I'm going to finish on this question and on this note because uh, I want to really emphasize for you that one of the best ways uh, to improve your IELTS band scores in an indirect way and just have an overall improvement in the quality of life is do daily exercise. It's absolutely vital to success in life, including the IELTS exam. And uh, that is where we will stop for today. I will be back on Wednesday as usual at the same time as today uh, and we'll kick the week off with speaking part one that will be the 21st thank you everyone for the wonderful participation all of your great contributions in the chat remember to speak not just type but also speak and repeat okay in these classes uh, I thank you Bekjan I'm looking forward to a good weekend goodbye Carolina thank you for joining Nawal Un nice persistence and uh, keeping up with the classes. Uh, Eugene, appreciate those emojis. 
Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. And if it's late in your country, then sweet dreams to you. Much love from the heart of Europe, Budapest. Bye for now. I'm Adrian, signing out.